All right, everybody. So it's Rob back with a another small tutorial. So today I decided I wanted to make a funky background. Now I got another video where I use acrylic paints that have been watered down and uh, do crazy effects. And I advise that you check those out and uh, check that one out and um, see how I do that. Um, what I've seen people do is put graphite and uh, charcoal powder and so I thought I'd try my hand at that because I kind of like the way that looks at least on other YouTube channels and so I thought what the heck I'll give it a try so here's my generals uh, charcoal powder this stuff gets everywhere so be real careful uh, when you open this up as you can see I keep mine obviously in the jar that comes sealed in but I keep it in a ziploc bag okay uh, and that's just going to help all that little puffs of powder. I'll put that over here. Just some napkins. And I've seen people do this with acetone, um, terpenoid, uh, and I think you can use it with water. But I decided because I have odorless mineral spirits from when I oil paint, I thought I'd put it in a little spritzer bottle. And you can get these like at Michael's and stuff. And that way you get a nice fine mist. If you hold the button down and let it drip, you get these big globs. Kind of get real cool effects. So I just filled this with a little bit of mineral spirits. I don't know anybody that's done it with mineral spirits, so maybe this is a complete failure. Um, we'll see. And I just used, I'm going to use uh, just a cheap uh, two inch brush. You know, you can get these. This has got the long handle. We got the cheapy one with the little. I don't know, three inch handle or whatever and those are like you know, a dollar so you don't need anything expensive so let's get going on this and if this comes out good uh, i'm hoping to use it in the very near future make another video for you guys where i'll actually use this paper uh in a in a portrait or maybe a figure or maybe both so we'll see oh by the way i'm using canson uh cold pressed 18 by 24 you can get that um, thick booklet it's like about three quarter inch thick it's like 30 sheets uh, you can get them at Michael's they're relatively expensive you got 50 cent uh, 50 percent coupon you can get it from 40 bucks down to 20 bucks so not bad and I use the back side in this case because it's a little smoother than the front side or you can use whatever brand of watercolor paper you want um, just make sure that it's hot pressed. This is cold pressed, but Canson's cold press is actually very fine weave. I guess you would call it a very uh, smooth surface, even when it's hot pressed, which is usually the rougher side. Uh, here's the front side. I don't know if you can tell. There's a little texture to it. Now, I'm going to use the smoother side, which is on the back, and hopefully that'll work. I'm already getting some fingerprints on here. So let's see how that works. And I like this brand because I can get it at 18 by 24 and it's relatively inexpensive. I can just write, you know, go right down the road and I, I got it. I don't have to uh, order it and wait for, you know, for it to be shipped or anything. So there's some powder. Wow, this stuff does get everywhere. It's already getting on the table here, so I'm going to have to clean that up. So I'm just going to play with it really I'm just put a little bit at a time this stuff goes a long way uh, if you got a cold don't use this because when you sneeze you're gonna get this crap everywhere except your paper so this I mean this is really really fine powder so I'm using a brush just like I would paint and maybe it'll give you some funky patterns you know you can kind of go on a diagonal you can do whatever and since this paper is relatively inexpensive, what I like about it is that I can, I can experiment. So even if I ruin this, no big deal, I'll still sketch on it. Uh, then I'll just break out another piece of, uh, of paper and just work right into it. So I'm gonna use a napkin. I'm just gonna fold it back on itself here. And I'm gonna try to get maybe, I don't know, some lighter tones in there. So 
I put down what I felt was enough to get the effects that I want, but you know, you may want to put more. And this is kind of like an abstract background, so it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. Because there's, you know, it's just a wacky background. And uh, you got to be brave when you're going to be getting into all this art stuff. Because you can't get, you know, scared that you're going to ruin something. So what? You know, that's how you learn. Okay, so here's the, uh, the big review, I guess. Let's see what happens when I spray this odorless mineral spirits. So I'm getting some fine mist. The fine mist doesn't really, it's too fine. It's not really doing much. So to get something interesting, I'm going to try to just hold the uh, the button down. Let it drip out. Oh yeah, that works a lot better. That's better there. I'm getting pretty cool effects, but I'm not liking that it's so, uh, so like, you know, light. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more of this charcoal powder here. So I went a little bit lighter, I guess, cause uh, more out of fear just to see what happens, just so I can kind of get a, uh, almost a scientific kind of approach, you know, a little lighter does this a little darker does that so i can kind of gauge the effects that i'm looking at and then try to decide for myself okay you know i don't like the light look i, I want it to be darker the next time uh it'll come out doing more of what i want it to do and i'm just kind of tapping it with my brush as you can see and i guess this would be a pretty cool background in itself uh the only thing i would suggest after this because this is just going to be a big old mess if you wanted to be able to put your hand on it and, and you know, rest your palm and be able to draw, I would probably suggest using some final fixative um, on the whole thing and just put it outside up against a board or something and just spray final fixative on this uh, just to fix all this material down onto the surface would be my, my suggestion. And I, I believe that would be a good idea so i'm just going to take i'm just tapping it off a little bit here i'm just going to tap a little bit there Hopefully, I get a cool effect. You know, I'm just kind of giving my brush a bunch of different angles to move in. And, uh, you know, you're getting fine lines when I do it this way or thicker lines when I do it that way. I'm just kind of getting it, trying to just get it everywhere, really. This is the, uh, not the most exciting video, but you know, you, you learn by trial and error, <clears throat> trial and error. Don't be scared to try something new, you know, just trying now my napkin. And what I'm discovering is that my napkin's kind of picking it up off the surface, which is not what I wanted. So I'm learning. I kind of thought that would happen. So it's nice to uh, to know that you know. It isn't nice to know that what you knew was right and it was what you shouldn't have done. <laughs> but maybe somebody out there likes that look. So it looks very smoky and kind of funky looking.
Okay, so I wasn't liking the effects I was getting with the mineral spirits. So I've got my daughters, I got two girls and they have never ending supply of nail polish, nail crap out of this nonsense. So this is acetone and I'm gonna try some of this. So I guess it's one good thing about having girls is that's not working. So what I'm doing is I'm dipping in my brush. This little thin brush. And then I'm letting the acetone by tapping it on the bottle. I'm letting that get onto the surface. Yeah, I like that. So the acetone has a, a slightly different effect. It tends to, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It has a, um, it seems like it holds on to the charcoal in its droplets, whereas the mineral spirit seems to kind of soak into the paper, like what you see in these spots here. And then they, the, the, the big goblets become just big black goblets, in this case, a dark gray. So that's not what I wanted, because that, that's gonna stick out too much. Uh, yeah, it's gonna stand out too much for what I was going for. Um, but like I said earlier, you live and you learn. put some more charcoal this side didn't seem to get a whole lot it seemed like it was all on the other side I'll put that, some of that over there this time I'm gonna let it sit on the surface now you can't just let these little uh, black powdered uh, charcoal just sit there on the surface that's just too thick okay there's no way of fixing something that thick to the surface and what will happen is that will smudge this is you know be a big mess um that you know that might be the, the, the look you're going for so keep that in mind let's see if i can find a bigger brush So I got a bigger brush. I was using this one and you can see how small that is. So I got this one. I'm gonna try that out. See how this works. Uh, let's see. First I wanna make sure I drag out some of this charcoal powder since it can't just sit there. It won't be on the surface as a black splatter. Although I gotta tell you that looks like a really cool effect um it's just not gonna stay there's nothing i can think of that would make it stay unless you maybe concocted some sort of a sticky surface of some kind that would stick to the charcoal and then maybe then how do you make the sticky stuff go away so you can then draw on it so maybe that's a maybe that's a whole other thing worth exploring So here I am, basically just moving the, the uh, charcoal around. And you can see here how when I brush it off, there's a little learning experience. 
it becomes white all along the edge here. I think that's because the mineral spirits absorbs into the surface, makes it almost like a sponge, and then the charcoal tends to want to just soak into it. So definitely not liking for my taste the mineral spirits. I will definitely stay away from that in the future other than to use it for my oil painting. So what I'm noticing is by going back over it like this with some fresh charcoal, I'm able to go over all those little spots that I put on before. So if you put on too many, uh, you don't like the look or whatever, um, the mineral spirits, you could, I don't know if you could see it on camera, but it's, uh, it's, it's absorbing the charcoal. Whereas I believe the areas that I put the, uh, acetone are being covered up so definitely another big plus for the acetone so i'm gonna get the bottle again there's the acetone i have no idea what brand is good because i'm a guy and i don't wear makeup so i'm going by whatever my kids have yeah i like that i like that And from what I understand, acetone tends to dry a lot faster than the mineral spirits. So it also has that advantage. Kind of beat on it a little bit harder. See if I do this, bigger globs. Starting to look almost like a gray space, and these are like little stars, almost. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, and um, I'll just let it sit here for a little bit. Once it dries, I'm gonna come back to it and uh, see what it looks like. And I might just put a little bit of the uh the final fixative to kind of help all this stuff get adhered to the, the the surface a lot better but i gotta tell you this is just becoming a big mess and being all the all the other papers that i've done in the past um all the experience i have from that using watered down acrylics like i like i did in this other video um i, I can get a lot of the same effects doing that and they're a little bit better looking, I would say. Um, I want to say a lot less messier too, and not, not such a, I don't have to spray fix it. It seems like it's going to be faster. I don't have so many steps to make this because it would be watered down acrylic and I would just swish it around and then, you know, glob a few, uh, maybe some water to uh, kind of do the same effects or even uh, a watercolor technique of using salt like large uh, rock salt or something like that, and you put it up or put it down on your paper, and what that does, it absorbs the actual water and, of course, the acrylic or, or watercolor, whatever you might be using. And then when it does that, after a few minutes, you kind of brush it off, and then you'll get a very similar effect to this. So we'll see how this works, and maybe I'll even do the rock salt thing in the future 
as another video. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so here's some final fixative. I'm gonna try some of this. I just did it off camera, and uh, what I noticed was the big, like the, the little black uh, clumps of charcoal that had built up from me swishing my brush and my paper around um, and my, my napkin. What ended up happening was the compressed air, whatever they use inside these cans, was like a, almost like blowing on it. It would just phew, make like big black puffs of smoke. And so basically, I guess you could say cleaned up all that charcoal off of it. So there's really no way that I can see you keeping the big black dark charcoal uh, clumps that we saw that looked like a cool effect on here as of right now. But that's not what I was going for. Anyways, I just wanted a funky background. So I'm going to do this final fixative thing. And hopefully this should work. So I'll be back and we'll get going on this. All right, so it's been dry for a little bit now for just, uh, I don't know, five minutes or so. And it's pretty good. It's not coming off really. I gave it a good two or three coats of the final fixative and I got this at Michael's. Here it is. Okay, great brand. Michael does like 10 bucks for a can. It's good stuff. I buy probably two or three of those a year. I don't really use it to find to put fixative on my uh, final work. What I do is um, sometimes I'll use it for stuff like this or like a background. But anyways, so there's the results. And I might just use this in a portrait in the near future. And we'll see that where I don't like these black blotches because they're just kind of like right where the face would be. And I would think that's going to be a problem. This, uh, this is an 18 this way, 24 this way. So I'm thinking if I just went 12 right in the middle, right around here, I made, you know, a half and then another half, I can make two smaller pieces and this would be, you know, out of the way on both. So, see, there's always a solution. So I've got another sheet. I wanted to show you something I did a while back. Same paper I mentioned earlier, same thing. Doesn't really matter if you use the back or the front. The back of it is just a little smoother. So that's why I'm using the back. But in this case, it got a little, uh, little damaged. So not a big deal. Just to be safe, I'm going to use the, uh, the so-called front side. And we'll do this. Now, what I'm going to do different this time is, here's a jar of sun-dried tomato. My favorite. And inside, I put the same... Uh, charcoal that I showed you earlier in the video and then I added some water and some alcohol just regular rubbing alcohol there it is right there okay regular rubbing alcohol no not rum not vodka for some of you uh, problematic types just regular old rubbing alcohol okay and I put some of the alcohol in here because I've done that before and what I usually use this is like liquid charcoal it's like homemade liquid charcoal now there's actually a company uh nitrum i think it is that's actually making a product called liquid charcoal so every time i think i'm being all cute and smart somebody's already invented it but i don't know what that cost i know this didn't cost me that much so I'm just right now moving it around if you add more water and alcohol you'll get instead of black you'll get like a gray which is actually what I'm going for. Because I'm not I don't want black paper. I want to be able to put charcoal onto it. So just shaking it around. Make sure that there's nothing stuck to the bottom. Things are nice and mixed. Alright, so now I'm gonna open this up carefully. And there's the lid. There's that, okay. So I'm gonna put this aside over here. Make some little black stuff came out of it. Trying to move my stuff over. So I'm just gonna, my big brush here. 
and I'm just going to do this thing and it's looking a little bit dark maybe a little too dark so give me one second I'm going to get a little bowl of water it is watercolor paper after all So I got a little, uh, little bowl of water here. And so I'm gonna add a little water to my paper. And what that'll do is basically thin it out. And make it more of a gray. Now, if you do this with just water, the advantage is it has more open time as far as the, um, the dry time goes. If you do it only with alcohol, this stuff will dry, you know, almost instantly. You know, what, what would be the advantage of that? Well, as you can see, hopefully, uh, let me try to brush it off a little bit. You can see where I first put it down only not even a minute ago. It's already kind of holding its, the brush strokes are, are being held in place. So if you like that effect, you can combine a little bit of the alcohol and charcoal and let that dry for just a second and then go over it with a little water. You could also pre-soak this paper ahead of time with some water and what that does by having it a little bit moist it gives you uh, a similar effect to what I'm doing it kind of keeps it from drying so fast if you're trying to get a more even tone so I'm trying to do kind of a little bit darker here and a little bit less and more water here a little bit lighter and more watery just to kind of give you guys an overall view of all this stuff. And what I like about these backgrounds, they're so wacky. You don't need to be the, you know, so anal and try to, you know, brush it perfectly even. In fact, I find that the not so even wacky, weird brush strokes that show the better. It becomes more artsy. So there's that. I can leave that and then let's just say, for example, there was a head going this way, right? So the top of the head be here and the bottom here. This could be on the back of the head as a darker looking spot. So you can kind of play with this to give you different effects, right? So over here, which already wet with water, I'm, I just dipped into some more of the uh, my homemade liquid charcoal. I'm just applying it here just so you guys can hopefully it comes out really good on this uh, video uh, visually where you guys can see it um, you see how the strokes you can blend them out more because the water is already wet from all the I mean the papers already wet from all the water I had added earlier There's that. And then just for the heck of it, I'm gonna try, again, this is all, I'm learning as we go. I'm gonna try dipping into my bottle of alcohol here. And I'm gonna see if that does anything. Try to see if alcohol does anything compared to the uh, acetone. It's not really doing much. Okay, well, you live and you learn. Now you know that alcohol really doesn't, well, you can see some of it over here before it dries any further. Dip into this acetone again. That might be too dry to do any of this to it. than show but over here there's a few little droplets that you can see uh, not very well so I'm assuming you probably can't tell on your video there and here's the same knack I was using before 
Maybe, oh, look at that. Wow, that's cool. So what I did was I took the same napkin I was wiping the uh, charcoal with earlier. And it's like the alcohol and the acetone, one or both, I'm not sure, uh, absorb some of that charcoal. And look at that, it's coming off. Oh, that is so cool. That is, that's awesome. That's awesome. Look at that. So you got some really, it almost looks like the moon. Look at that. Holy smokes. Folks, you're seeing this for the first time. I'm assuming I'm the first person. I have no idea. Uh, did I do this? I'm going to go back to the alcohol, see what, if it was that. I'm going to try it over here where, it, where I first laid it down and see if maybe that does something. Maybe that's what's doing it. Yeah, I think it is the alcohol. I see some over here are some of the, like, it's pushing the charcoal away and becoming little rings. Wow, that is, that is exciting. That is really cool. Yeah, it looks like the alcohol is what's giving me that effect. So I'm going to go back to the acetone. Open this bottle back up. I'm going to try this area over here. Just to see. Trying to segregate little areas just to kind of get a, a feel for what's what. And this is the same napkin I was using earlier when I did that first page. So I'm just going to give it like a, a second or so just to let it absorb onto the paper. And I'm just, and I'm not rubbing hard by the way. I'm doing this very gently. Okay. It's not doing much, but it could be because this area was the mixture that I had in the jar that first poured out that it was on dry paper and it has a high level alcohol and so it was drying quickly. This area was mainly water and then to thin out this stuff here. So whatever was on left over on my brush from what I did here, I dipped it into the water and then it gave me this lighter gray effect. So what we learned is if you want this effect over here, you can just get it right out of the jar, thin it out a little bit, and you get that. If you like this, uh, we'll call it the moon crater effect. You gotta, it looks like you gotta pre-soak the paper. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get another sheet, and I'm gonna try to simulate this again. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with another brand new sheet. And as promised, what I'm going to do this time, I'm dipping into this bowl of water with my brush. And you can see my brush is dirty. That's why it's coming out nice, nice and gray rather than black and inky. And by the way, in case I forget, um, if your paper starts to bow and, and buckle a little bit, it's just because of the water. Okay, if you just let it dry for a while, it'll usually flatten out. What I like to do is whenever that happens with my watercolor papers is I start letting it dry out and once they're dry, I'll put a bunch of books on them and I just kind of stack books on each corner and let it sit overnight. And that usually gets them pretty straight. Okay, so I'm just using just straight water and whatever dirty charcoal was on my brush because it was dirty, not because I added anything. And there's that. So it's just basically soaking the surface and here's my little uh, mixture and so I don't want too much because I want it to be super black I want it to just go into the grays Paper keeps moving on me. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I like the pre-soaked look. It gives you a nice uh, 
more even tone. So I like this effect a lot more using my homemade liquid charcoal. By the way, I use my homemade liquid charcoal to like get black around uh, a subject that I'm painting. Okay, so let's try the alcohol first. See if that does anything. Oh yeah, that's definitely doing something. Oh yeah. If I had this guess, I, I don't even think I want to waste my time with the uh, the acetone. This looks like it looks like it's working. Okay. So I'm just going to let that alcohol. It's a great thing about alcohol is that it dries super fast. So I'm just going to let that sit for a few more seconds. And then I'm going to get my napkin. I'm, I'm using the same napkin from the other sheets because it's already dirty. So that way, if I hit any white spots, it'll, uh, it'll do its thing. Oh, yeah. It was the alcohol. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to go like this. It, it just pushes the charcoal to the edges and gives you this moonscape sort of effect. So if you're into I don't know, astronomy or something, you like painting fantasy stuff with moons or something, I guess, or you just like painting our moon, here's a great way for you guys to, uh, to do that. Look at that. Wow, I am so happy with this effect. This is amazing. This is a really, really just amazing, cool effect. Now, just a little bit more of the alcohol over here. Just be careful with your eyes. Make sure this stuff doesn't, you know, splatter on your face or anything. Okay, there's my. Politically correct, make sure I don't get sued. Comment. A lot of special people out there. I think you know what I mean by special. So there's that. So let's try. Now that it should be pretty dry, kind of gently. Remember, I'm not pressing hard. Gently. It's pulling out a few of those little craters, let's call them. This would be great for a, uh, you know, Buzz Aldrin or, or one of the, the, the astronauts, you know, from the famous ones to the not so famous ones. You know, maybe you know one that uh, you want to do a portrait of. Wow. You know, the ones that went to the moon. Look at this. How cool is this? I mean, this is just amazing. Um, this would even be cool to do in, and I think I might actually try that, in red. And make it look almost like a, a cratered part of, uh, of Mars. You know, they do all these Mars missions. You know, I could see somebody doing one of the uh, astronauts that go to Mars and probably, uh, I don't know, whenever it is in the near future. So just to recap, what I found, what gave me this effect was my little homemade liquid charcoal. And it's basically this, the General's, ah, oh, crap. The General, I told you this stuff goes everywhere. General's liquid charcoal, excuse me, uh, General's um, powdered charcoal. I put it in here with some alcohol and some water. I can't tell you the ratio because I just kind of eyeballed it. I don't want to tell you it was an ounce or five ounces or whatever, because I'd be lying to you. I really don't know. Jeez, uh, I just ruined that maybe. I'm not going to worry about it. So, uh, yeah, so it's a little water, a little alcohol, and some charcoal powder, and you got yourself some homemade liquid charcoal. Uh, and then what I did, I got the alcohol, and again, it's just regular rubbing alcohol, and I just kind of tap the bottle or your knuckle or whatever, and just let it splatter. Wait a few seconds, because that, that stuff needs to kind of soak in, and then I just got a napkin and wiped it up, and then you'll get this moon crater sort of effect if you wish to get that kind of effect. I think the acetone will give you more of the effect where it probably won't look like a moon crater. 
it'll likely look wherever these circles are. I think the acetone would give you more of a uh, of a looking like splattered water, I guess you could say, like uh, like where it pushed the alcohol out, and so it wouldn't be dark in the middle; it'd be light. I believe that's the effect you would get from alcohol. I mean, excuse me, from the acetone. But I'm liking this effect a lot, so I'm just gonna keep that. So if you like this video, if you found it helpful, I hope it, you know, taught you something that you find it helpful to do art in the future. Uh, please hit like and try to subscribe. I try my best to get as many videos out there as possible. And I try to make every video educational where you can get something out of it, not just some, you know, strange form of entertainment. Like I see a lot of videos, it ends up being more entertainment than education. So... This is Rob signing out. Thank you so much. God bless. You guys be safe.